giant teapots. Uh, this is the main reason a lot of you are taking this advanced class. Um, here's a faceted teapot here. Um, this is kind of what we're going to be making today. Now, we're not going to be making faceted, uh, exactly a faceted teapot. We'll be making a smoother teapot with a little bit easier to access lid. Um, these are a little easier when you're first learning to throw teapots. Uh, the more things you can um, eliminate and simplify, the easier these are going to be to make. But this will be the teapot we'll be making today. Um, now, I don't know if you recall from earlier video, but we always throw the gallery first. So the gallery is the portion that this lid's going to sit on. Some lids have a gallery on the lid. This has a gallery on the body. So that being said, we're going to throw this body first. I've got here about a pound and a half of clay. We're going to get this centered really quick. Now teapots are a little bit of a wide cylinder. They're not really wide like our uh, vegetable steamers, but they are a wide cylinder. So we're going to center those fairly low. We're not going to center them real high in a real high ball. So they are centered fairly low. It's almost like throwing a bowl. Okay, once you get your ball of clay centered, go ahead and open up. I like to open in a V shape until I get to my final thickness. And my final thickness is going to be about the thickness of a pinky, 3 8 to half an inch. So once I get to that depth, I will check it with a needle tool and we're ready to open up. Okay, so to open up our ball of clay, I come back in here. I'm going to use my left hand for a little bit of support, pushing in towards this wall. My right hand is going to hook and pull outwards, flat across the bottom. I want a flat bottom cylinder. See that? We'll come back in and we'll compress. Moving back and forth, packing that clay down. We don't want our teapots to crack. Okay, we've compressed our bottom, we've gotten it all under control. We're ready for some walls. So let's come out here to the outside, and begin to pinch, and pull up some walls. Remember, we're doing a gallery on this lip, so we want to leave this rim fairly thick. The walls down here can be uh, thinner, but you want to stop your pulls a little short to leave some thickness uh, in the rim. Okay, we need another pull or two, so we'll come back down to the bottom and pinch and we'll move upwards. And that's about all the wall we're going to need for this teapot. So the wall down here is fairly, is actually pretty thin, and the rim is a little chunky. Now that we have walls, we're ready to begin uh, shaping our teapot. So usually I try to get any moisture that we don't need out of the inside. And I will come in with a rib. Today I'm using just a plastic rib. And I'm going to give this thing some belly. So I'm going to come into the bottom and I'm going to scoop outwards like I would throwing a bowl. And give this pot a little bit of a belly. That's going to give our teapot volume. And with that little bit of prep work done, we can split this rim. I'll come do a little bit of compressing just to clean any slop or anything off. That way when we uh, split this and open it up, we don't have any trash and it's nice and clean. There's no boogers and lumps of uh, junk in there to be sharp. So I'll split this rim by taking my needle tool and I'm going to go in line with the wall. Uh, just like before, if you go too up and down or too sideways, you can split the wall and cut all the way through um, the wall and lose your uh, rim. So let's go ahead and split that about a half an inch down, going in line with the wall. All right, and I'm going to take the back of my needle tool, um, the squared off end of my needle tool, and I'm going to open this up a little bit so I can get in there with my fingers. So I spread that split rim open. So now that that is open, I can get in here with my fingers, and I can pinch and shape this inside gallery, and I can come out here and pinch and shape the outside of my gallery, this, this lip up here. Okay, now that we've split it, we've got a good healthy gallery. We're going to want to smooth this up a little bit. Um, I like to use a sponge just to make sure it's wet all the way around. When we split that, we open up a lot of fresh clay, and it's really easy to stick to this and drag and tear it or mess it up. I've got the bottom half of this gallery looking pretty good. How I like And just like that, 
the body of our teapot is done. Clean up the bottom. We'll pull a wire tool underneath it and cut it loose and we'll set this whole bat aside. One thing we will do before we set this aside is take our measurement while this is wet because these tend to shrink even while you are throwing your lid enough that the lid won't fit. The tiniest bit of drying can make a really big difference in the fit of our lids. So we want to measure these when they're as wet as possible. So we'll measure this pot, set it aside, and we are now ready to throw our lid. So let's, we'll center our ball of clay. Now I didn't measure this ball of clay, but it's probably also about a pound and a half. Um, the amount of clay for your lid is unimportant because we're only going to be using the top portion of this clay. So we're going to be throwing off of the hump. So we'll center this. We really only need to focus on centering uh, the top portion of the clay since it's all we're going to be using. If you center the whole ball, that's fine, but don't worry too much about the bottom. So we'll center out a ball of clay. We center this, we want to center it kind of like a doorknob so that there's an, an under portion to it and then it comes up over top. So that way we can access underneath here. So we'll center us a doorknob. Then we're going to come up to the top and open. We don't open right in the middle, we open just next to the middle. And that is going to leave us this little nub of clay. Uh, we'll ignore that nub of clay until we get our lid uh, the size we want, and then we'll come back in and we'll make a knob out of it. So to make this lid, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw us a little bowl. So since we threw a knob, we can get up underneath this knob, door knob shape, and we can pinch and come up and pull a little wall. So what we're doing is we're, we're quite literally throwing um, a little bowl. We just need to pull up enough that we have enough wall to lay out and make our uh, intended lid size. Now I'm going to pull up way more wall than I need so it's too big because I can always trim down a little bit. Um, I always try to throw these a little larger than what I need. Okay, now that we have a little bowl, we'll take our calipers and see about how close we are. We're throwing a bowl that is just smaller than the calipers and that is about perfect. We need these to be just slightly smaller than our intended measurement because when we lay these out, they'll get wider. Okay, to lay these out, I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to pick a spot on the outside and hold that still. And with my left hand, I'm going to push the wall over top of that right hand. And that is going to give me this flange. So it's almost like a bowl that's now a, become a pasta bowl. And that pasta bowl edge um, is what's going to sit in our pot. So let's grab our calipers and double check. Let's see about how close we are. It looks like we are almost right on. We're ready to make our knob. You might notice this whole lid looks a little different. Um, I had a chunk of sponge in the first ball of clay I had and lost that lid. But through the magic of television, here we are, we're back to where we started. So we, we leave that nub of clay alone. We don't really touch it. I like to narrow it up at the bottom. It gives us something to grab. And then with this chunk of clay up at the top, we can make our knob. So I'll use the um, a rounded end of my finger, usually the corner of my finger. And I'll push down right in the middle. And that will open up that little nub of clay. And then I like to lay it over a little bit, just to widen it out. That way the knob kind of mirrors the outside. I like when they do that. Now that we've got a knob formed, we'll clean up all of our edges. And if you have any moisture in here, get rid of it. Um, you can even compress a little bit in here, just be easy, because this will change um, pretty readily. Now, okay, for those of you that are having a hard time picking up this style of lid, you can take a heat gun or a torch and just warm this up um, just slightly. You really don't want to torch the heck out of these just a little bit, and that'll keep them from warping. Okay, we've heat gun or torched that a little bit just to stiffen up this outside. Now, I've brought you guys in close so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to let a couple of fingers rest up here, and you'll see... This is actually the same taper I made whenever I centered and made that doorknob. I'm going to take my needle tool, and I'm not going to use the point of this tool. I'm going to use the edge of it, and I'm going to begin pushing in, all the while my fingers are dragging on the outside of this lid. And I'm pushing in with the side of that needle tool until I get to the center. And when I get to the center, you'll notice the lid stops spinning, and the bottom keeps spinning. And I leave that needle tool underneath it to hold it from the center to keep this from warping. I'll take it over to my board, I'll set it down and then I'll slide the needle tool out. So I leave this needle tool underneath it to kind of lift it and my fingers are just here to keep it from falling over. 
All right, now that we've gotten our lid off of there, let's throw a spout for our teapot. So again, I'm throwing this off the hump. This is the same ball of clay. I will bring up some clay. I'm gonna move this one around to see if it has a sponge in it ahead of time. Okay, I center me a little bit of a doorknob. This, this time it's not that important to have an undercut underneath it. Um, it's not gonna make any difference for what we're doing. Okay, to make a spout, what we're gonna be making is a small bottle. We really only need the neck of the bottle and a little bit of the body, but it's a, that's all it is is a little bitty bottle. So we'll open up our little ball of clay and we will begin to pull up some walls. I usually like to mark where my bottom is right there. So whenever I go to cut this off, I know where the bottom is. I will bring this up and I'm keeping this pretty thin all the way up. Since this is a, a spout for our teapot and it's little, we don't want to add a lot of weight to just one part of the teapot because it'll tilt weird, the weight will be funny. So, and we'll come in, I don't need all of this height, I, that's a little tall, cut that off. And we're ready to begin collaring this in or bringing this in. Um, if you want a little bit more belly or throat on your ventral uh, spout, you can belly this out a little bit and that can be pretty nice. So I'm going to put a little bit of a belly on this bottom and then I'm going to collar in this top. So I'm going to come up here and begin collaring and as I collar this portion is going to get thicker. So I pulled up pushed in a little bit and then I'm going to pull so that gets a little thinner. And then I'm going to squeeze this next section and as it gets a little bit thicker and then I'm going to pull that section. So basically I'm stair-stepping my way up. So as I go up I'll squeeze a section and then pull that section. Now when you throw really big bottles um, you won't actually be able to reach back in down here if you thought it was thicker down in there. So that's really where that becomes um, an important skill to have if you're throwing really tall bottles and that'll keep the wall thickness even from the bottom all the way up to the top. Maybe make it a little bit taller just by narrowing the whole thing. That'll give me a little bit more um, height to this top spout part. And continue squeezing it in. And that's about as skinny as I'm going to go. Now, usually when you're collaring in, your rim will get off. So that's normal. So this is the portion, this is the part where we're going to cut that off. You want to get that cut off part under control. And now we're ready to clean everything up and finish this off. We'll clean up our rim I'm using a little bit of a chamois. So you'll notice I got a little bit of a flare. That's going to make this spout pour really nicely because as you tilt that pot, we already have a little bit of a downwards angle. When we go to attach this to our teapot, we'll talk a little bit more about what makes a spout pour without dripping. The last thing I'll do before I take this off is I like to oval this a little bit. It makes a little bit of a kind of a teardrop shape. This is the side I'm going to be pouring from. The other thing I like to do is pull this back a little bit, pulling a little bit off center. Uh, the combination of giving this thing a little bit of a belly and pulling that back is going to give my spout a little bit of a throat down here. And, you'll, and again, you'll see that whenever I go to attach it. So just like when you throw this lid, I'm going to get this a little bit warm, which will make it a little bit easier to handle when I go to cut it off. We're ready to cut this off and set it aside. Now I've wiped my hands so I don't have any nasty muddy stuff that's going to leave marks on here. Um, they don't have to be spotless, but just dry and kind of clean. I'm ready to cut this off. So just like with the lid, I'm going to use the edge of the needle tool and not the point. And I'm going to cut across until I reach the center. And when I reach the center, the bottom keeps spinning and the top will stay still. And I'll leave that needle tool underneath to support it from the middle and use my hands to, just as a balance and I'll set it aside. So in the time it took us to throw the rest of the parts of our teapot, the teapot has been drying. It is now dry enough that it doesn't leave fingerprints and we can dimple in a part of the wall. And what that's gonna allow us to do is use tea bags and then not sit flat against all the holes and block them, um, allowing this to pour even with the bag still in the pot. So we're gonna put in a nice domed in dimple. And I usually use the round end of a tool. There's our dimple. 
we'll leave this alone until it is leather hard and uh, we won't touch this again until we get ready to trim it and then we'll poke our holes. Okay, and with that we have all the parts for teapot. These can be left to dry for a couple of days until they can be assembled.